everyone so this week we're going to talk about fractions ratios and proportional reasoning i'm sure many of you guys are already familiar with fractions and ratios so i'm going to jump straight into the problems starting with problem one in a school election candidate a got 33.3 repeating percent of the votes cast b got 9 20th c got 2 15th and the other candidate, D, got the remaining 75 votes. So how many students voted in the election? All right, so the first thing we, need, we should do is to figure out what is 100% here. So this is like, this is a bar, and this is all of the votes cast. And what, that's what we're looking for. That's the question. So I'm going to call this 100%. And then what we want to do is that is to say that these three items, these three people took a certain percentage of this 100% and the rest of this percent is 75 votes. So what we want to do is to figure out um, how much how many how much of the total this part is so we can figure out how much of the total 75 votes is and then we can figure out what the total is, 100%. All right, so first we should add these three together. 33.3% uh, repeating is one third plus nine, oh wait, nine twentieths plus nine twentieths plus two fifteenths. So how do you add fractions? Well, you want the denominator to all be the same. So we're going to find the greatest common, uh, shoot, greatest, no, least common multiple, sorry, least common multiple between 3, 20, and 15. So how do we do that? Well, 3, if we factorize this, 3 is equal to 3, 20 is equal to 2 times 2 times 5, 15 is equal to 3 times 5. So the, the least common multiple has to have at least one of all of these factors. So, okay, it must, our least common multiple ha must have a three to make it divisible by three. It must have two times two to, times five to make it divisible by 20. And this, th this here is divisible by 15 already because there's a three and a five. Right, so what number is that? Well, that number is 2 times 2, 4, 4 times 5, 20, 20 times 3, 60. We're going to make all of these numbers have a denominator of 60 before we can add them together. All right, so 1 third, well, we multiply the bottom and the top by 20, so we get 20 over 60. 9 twentieths, we multiply the top and the bottom by 3, so sam gao, 27 sixtieth. And then for 2 15ths, we also multiply the top and the bottom by 4, so 8 sixtieths. And then when we add, it to, add them together, we get it's 47 plus 8, 5, 1, 55, 55 60th. So this here, the rest of the votes, is 55 sixtieths of the total. So this 75 votes must be 5 sixtieths of the total. Okay, and what we're trying to find is 100% or 60 sixtieths. So what we can do now, we know that 5 sixtieths, or actually let's call the total number of votes x, total number of votes cast, cast is equal to x is equal to total number of votes cast. So from this part here, we know that 5 sixtieths of the total number of votes cast is equal to 75 votes. So how do we figure out what x is? Well, we divide both sides by 5 sixtieths. x is equal to 75 divided by 5 sixtieths, or 75 times 60 fifths. So that's how you turn uh, division into multiplication. 
All right, so now that we have that, x is equal to, well, we can divide 75 by 5. 7 divided by 5 is 15. 15 times 60 is 900. There should be 900 votes cast in total. Um, and then we can verify that this makes sense by multiplying 900 times 5 sixtieths. That's equal to get rid of the zero. Divide by divide by two is forty five. Divide by two is three. Divide by three is one. Divide by three is fifteen. Fifteen times five be something to seventy five. Okay, and then we can check even further by verifying that this part is actually 5 sixtieths of the total by checking our work and adding this up. Although I wouldn't check my work that far. All right, so um, in total, X is equal to 900 votes cast. Uh, okay, problem two. The price of a car is originally $10,000. If the price is decreased, by 25%, then increase by 25%. What is the resulting price? So this is a common mistake that students might make when they are multiplying certain thing by a certain percent and then having, and there's a discount by a certain percent. The answer is not 10,000, even though that may be your instinctual, you know, answer. Right, so first we start with 10,000. And then we have a 25% dis discount. So the price is decreased by 25%. So the new price would be 75% of the original price. But then afterwards, the price is increased by 25% again. So we have to multiply that by 125%. So 25% for the increase and then 100% for, you know, the original price. So you're adding 25% to the original price on top of that. And what you might notice is that, well, first, I don't like keeping things as percents. I'm going to make this a fraction. 75 divided by 100, 125 divided by 100. Well, what you might notice is that if you multiply 75 over 100 by 20, 125 over 100, that does not equal 100 over 100. It does not equal 1. The answer is not 10,000. So actually, let's simplify these fractions first before we multiply everything out. Um, 75 divided by 100 can be simplified into 3 fourths divide the top and the bottom by 25. This can be simplified into 5 fourths. And so what we have left is 10,000 times 15 sixteenths. 10,000 times 15 sixteenths. Uh, what's a good way of multiplying this? Okay, well first, 10,000 is divisible by... 10,000 is divisible by 4. So we can divide this by 4, make that 4. Divide this by 4, that becomes 2,500. And then we can divide this by 4 again, that becomes a 1. If we divide this by 4, we get the say lot yes, say say lot yes, say 125. Okay, so now that we have gotten rid of this denominator by dividing this out, we can multiply 625 by 15. And then we get our final cost. Oh, that was supposed to be a dollar sign. 
Our final cost is 9,375. Uh, just keep in mind, don't... Okay, most of these problems, don't go with your gut instinct. Actually, write out the problem, multiply it out. This is a pretty um, simple problem as far as problem solving goes. All right, problem three. The price of a ring is decreased 40% and the resulting price is increased by 50%. Uh, the final price is $360. What is the original price? Okay, well, this is a good time to make use of our algebra skills. X is equal to the original price, OG price. Um, so the OG price, X, was decreased by 40%. So it, so it became 60% of what it once was. Uh, making this a fraction, 60 over 100. And then the resulting price is increased by 50%. So 150 over 100. Decreased 40%, so it's 60%. And then this whole thing is increased by 50%, so 150 over 100. And the final price is $360. So now that we have this equation, it's just a matter of solving for x. Um, okay, what we can do is to simplify the fractions. One of the reasons why I like writing these percents and these as fractions is because it's easier to simplify. So we'll do this, 6 over 10. Uh, divide both sides by 2, that becomes 3 fifths. And on this side, zeros, that becomes, divide both sides by 3, that becomes, uh, divide both sides by 5, that becomes 3 over 2. I'm sorry, doing this up, yep. And so x times this equals 360. All right, what you can do now is, hmm, you can't simplify this side further. You can multiply x by this and then uh, divide both sides by the fraction, or you can multiply both sides by 10. I mean, it's a matter of how you want to solve this, actually. Um, so if I, was, if I was going for uh, speed and I didn't have time to contemplate what's the most optimal way to solve this equation, I would just brute force it. That becomes 9 tenths, x equals 360. Oh, if you multiply both sides by, oh. So you can actually make this, okay, no, that's, okay, I will avoid doing that. You can both divide both sides by 9 tenths. That's the same as multiplying both sides by 10 over 9. That becomes a 1 times 10 over 9. x is equal to 360 times 10 over 9, uh, and then you can divide both sides by 9, that's a 1, 9, say dollar sign, 40, x is equal to 400. And then of course we can verify that by plugging it back into this equation. Or actually, I, do, um, I would say if you are doing our worksheet problems, you can use a calculator to check. I would advise you to do all this math by hand or, you know, mental math it like some people, but you can do your checking with a calculator. X is equal to 400. All right, um, oh, problem four, this is an interesting one. Find X divided by Y if we know this complicated equation is true. We're trying to find x divided by y, and we know that x plus 2y divided by x minus y is equal to 3 fourths. Okay, so first of all, this looks very complicated. You can't divide this out. So what can you do about this? You can multiply both sides by 4, multiply both sides by 3. This part gets a little bit tricky if you do not know... Um, this sort of trick, I suppose. What you can do is define cross products. So I will say this now. If this is true, 4 times x plus 2y is equal to 3 times x minus y. So here, cross.
cross products. And the reason why this is true is because if we have our equation, our original equation, x plus 2y divided by x minus y equals 3 fourths, if we multiply both sides, we multiply both sides by 4, then we have 4 on this right here, right? This becomes a 1, 4 times this right here is equal to 3, and then we can multiply both sides by x minus y. So that get rid get, that gets rid of this denominator, but then it multiplies, you have to multiply this side too. So in the end result, you get 4 times the sum of x and 2y is equal to 3 times the difference between x and y. Anyways, this is why cross multiplying works. Then you have this, and it makes it a lot easier to solve for x divided by y. So you just multiply this out, 4x plus 8y is equal to 3x minus 3y. Uh, okay, you subtract 3x from both sides and then subtract 8y. You get x is equal to minus 3x minus 3x, x minus 8y, negative 11y. And then if you divide by y on both sides, you get x divided by y is equal to negative 11. Uh, normally when you have, um, when they give you a specific kind of format that they want the variables to be in, for example, x divided by y, or if you remember a worksheet uh, before, we, ha we wanted you to find the reciprocal of 1 of x, the, the sum of the reciprocal of x and y. So we want to find this. And the trick was to um, add these together first. So you have x plus y divided by xy. Anyways, usually if they want it in a specific format, there's a certain trick to it that means that you don't necessarily need to solve for x and solve for y first before you put it in this format. In fact, it might even be impossible All right, problem five, this is the last problem in our percents and fractions section. Oh, this one's also an interesting one. So A, B, C, D, and E are consecutive points on a line. If they're consecutive points on a line, that means that there's a line like this, and they are consecutive, like consecutive integers. So first comes A, then comes B. Oh, not C, B, C, D, E. All right. A divided by B is A divided by B A B divided okay. Sorry, my, my mind is a little bit scrambled right now. A B divided by B C is equal to one third. What this means if we use the cross multiply method, this means that three A B is equal to B C. Okay, and B C divided by C D is equal to one fourth. So what this means is that four B C is equal to C D. And then C D divided by D E is equal to one half. What this means is two C D is equal to D E. And what we're trying to find is A C divided by B E. Okay, so we have a lot of um, equations here, and we could probably solve this using a system of equation. But the reason why I drew out this diagram here is to show you um, a bit of an easier method than just using pure algebra. So right now you say that, you see here that AB divided by BC is equal to one third. So if we make AB an arbitrary number, like I, for you know simplicity's sake, I'm just going to make a guess that a b is equal to one. It doesn't really matter what number it is as long as the proportions are correct. So the proportion of a b to b c is correct. If a b is equal to one, b c has to be equal to three. And so up here, if if b c here here if b c is equal to three, to make sure that this fraction is still 
holds true, CD must be 12. Because 3 divided by 12 is equal to 1 divided by 4. So CD must be 12. And so if CD is 12 over here, then DE must be 24. And remember, this is, I'm just giving them um, an arbitrary value. It doesn't really matter as long as the proportions stay constant, stay, it's correct. Um, and the reason why I can do this is because what we're looking for is a comparison of AC to BE. We're not actually looking for what the value of AC is or what the value of BE is. In fact, we can't figure out what the value of AC or BE is because all of this is expressed in proportions. Comparisons, ratios, fractions. I always think about it um, in that way. All right, we want to find AC divided by B. Well, what is AC here? That distance is 4. And the distance of B here is 3 plus 12 plus 24. That's 36 plus 3, 39. And so our answer is 4 divided by 39. And this is the answer as a common fraction because you can't simplify this further. Um, if you if you did choose to make this into a systems of equation, you could also um, you could also so uh, solve this using substitution. Although I will leave this as an exercise to the viewer, if you were interested in figuring out how to solve this algebraically. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, Adam is going to cover the proportion and ratios portion of the lecture.